Hello there, I am the Common Sense Guy and welcome back to my channel. Um, I'm not feeling exactly too well at the minute. I've got a bit of a dizzy air, my nose is very, very uh, tingly up top. I don't know, it feels all weird. I've got a bit of tonsillitis on the way. Um, I'm going to the doctors hopefully in about two, three hours. So hopefully we'll be all right for tonight's show. Um, otherwise I'll be hacking up and hawking up and doing lovely, lovely things. Anyway, let's, let's move on. Till the, the prize show of what's on today. Um, today we're going to be doing a video on a flat earther. Now generally I don't do videos on flat earthers because generally I don't really give credence to the idea too much. But I thought I'd give the idea of a thought experiment, so to speak, to be able to go through this. So I thought, okay, let's go through this. Let's do a flat earth video. Let's see how it is. It can't be that bad, right? So, with that being said, together, why don't we go and do this, shall we? Let, let's, let's do it. Back again for a little video. Be the last one for a while. I haven't put many videos up or spoke about much. Because, I don't know, it's all getting a bit disheartening, this flat earth malarkey, talking to people, okay? So, talking to people about your ideas, your belief systems and everything else like that is a, kind of a disappointment. I suppose it would be if it was a case of your ideas and uh, what you're trying to preach is a case of most people would laugh at you. I can kind of see that and I'm not going to do that here. I'm honestly not. But you can kind of see where a lot of people would be under the consensus and the scientific consensus of the day and age as well. That what you're trying to preach without physical evidence is just you trying to preach. And I know a lot of people would go, but my mirage, but my mirage, that proves Earth isn't a curvature. No, refraction proves that it's definitely a curvature. Otherwise, if it wasn't, refraction wouldn't be to what it is. Uh, see videos like Great Persanipi and Red's rhetoric on those ideas. So, uh, yeah, let's carry on, shall we? Sounds can say just a couple of things. Now, after... You've researched the flat earth for yourself, okay? I have. I have researched it, to be fair. It's uh, one of the only conspiracy theories that I generally cannot actually gauge any credence to. There are some where I can gauge some credence to as a thought experiment and give them the, so to speak, the, the I don't know, maybe the idea of maybe it could happen. Benefit of the doubt, I think, is what the words I was looking for. But something to do with the flat earth is just... There's no evidence to prove that it is a flat earth. Bar a book that's written in religiosity and religious dogma that I don't believe in in the first place. And then second of all, your ideas of this idea of perception. It just doesn't prove what you think it does prove. But... Then again, I don't want to be condescending and I don't want to presume your arguments. So, please, carry on. You're awake to a lot more other things. Food industry, medicine industry, car industry. You so, literally, you're saying that if you believe in the flat earth, it's a gateway drug to other conspiracy theories. Um, I'm not sure if that's a good thing or if that's a bad thing especially with some people that decide that for instance people that think about vaccines and things like that that think that they're uh, causing autism and things like that and blah 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 okay fine maybe there is some credence for it in a small amount but the point is that even in that small amount it's only a small amount of people that get it and even pushing that it's still a case of you're pushing a conspiracy theory and trying to say that this conspiracy theory is the same level as another conspiracy theory. And the thing is, they're not the same. They're not the same. Nowhere near the same. You could argue the fact of maybe vaccines are bad and they can cause you problems. Maybe. I mean, you can't really under the scientific scrutiny. But maybe you could. This... You don't have a leg to stand on. You have no evidence whatsoever. This is purely a belief system. And we'll get into the reasons why later into this video. So, 
let's let's carry on, shall we? You name it. Even the education system's a bit dodgy. Okay? So what difference does it make that they've lied to you about the shape of the earth as well? By living on the globe, okay, life isn't special, it's an accident. And basically it's a waste of time. Okay. Nobody has ever said that life is a waste of time. All we're doing that people that believe in this globe conspiracy theory or are pushing a anti-theist idea of the world is trying to say that there is more of a purpose that we can create than what we can do under the perception of a god that created it and the fact is that we can understand the creational points more than it's uh it's magic or oh we don't understand why there's a a dome around the earth and we can't ever see or feel the dome whatsoever but you know magic okay we're just advanced super walking talking monkeys well done that that's exactly what we are we are advanced walking talking monkeys there is nothing special about us apart from our intellect compared to other animals i'll tell you what the earth isn't a globe okay and it brings back the three questions who created us who created the earth and why are we here so again comes back to religiosity it comes back to the idea of oh if the earth is flat then that means who created us? Ah, oh, it means what are our purposes? What's the reason for us being? And it always goes back to the same purpose and the same point. Must have been God. Must have been God. It was God that did it all. It was God that did this all. Anyway, I'd much rather live in a world that does not have a God to be under the assumption that I am in control of my own life rather than an omniscient prick that wants to give people cancer and doesn't understand humanity in itself. Four questions. What's our purpose? Now, I've come to realise a lot of things, okay? Aliens is what people perceive as greys from a different star system, okay? They're demons in alien skin. Yes. Yes, you did just hear that correct. Even if you are under the assumption and under the belief that there are aliens that come and visit our luscious green planet or our luscious blue marble, so to speak, then it's a case of they're not really aliens, they're actually devils. They're actually demons that are in alien form because they want to conform to a satanic ritual that is a global conspiracy over the world to make sure that you believe in a globe so that you don't feel that you have a purpose, so you don't follow God. That, that's the whole thought process, by the way. That, that right there is the whole thought process. Fact. Okay. Just research it for yourself. You know, don't listen to me and think, oh, yeah, I believe everything you say. You should, but, you know, never mind. Right. I don't know if everybody got that. But, first of all, he says do your own research. Luckily enough, I'll put a link into my description box of the original video. Any sources that I do use, I will also link in the description box for you to do your own research. Um, guess what this gentleman's done? Yeah, correct. Fuck all. Nothing. No links. No research material. Can't find out where he's found out this idea that demons are aliens or aliens are demons, whatever way you want to put it. So, yeah. And then you got the bit at the end. Oh, you shouldn't listen and believe me. But you should. But you should. Not sure I should. Really not sure I should. And um, near-death experiences, people witness. Okay? People believe in demons, spirits, ghosts, magicians. People believe all that. Okay? Yes, people do believe in that. But there's a slight difference. The people that believe in people like magicians know that the trick is what it is. It's a trick. It's not magic. It's the illusion of magic. For people that believe in ghosts, they don't go, you should believe in ghosts. For people that believe in aliens, generally, generally, hashtag, not all, won't go to you saying, you should believe in aliens. They ask you, do you believe in aliens? You and other people of your ilk will come out and say, 
you should believe in the flat earth. And then when you give evidence to try and prove your theory and people go, well, that doesn't make sense. Here's why it doesn't make sense. You then cry. Well, maybe not cry. Maybe cry is a bad word. But then you go back to your religiosity and you stand off from the science that you try to use and you go back to religiosity and religious dogma. We'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. So why can't you believe in God or angels? Okay, Because they don't show themselves like what demons do. Uh, again, the, the thing is, if you believe in demons, then you believe in God. If you believe in God, you believe in demons. The, the thing is with this, that people pick and choose what their belief systems are. The purpose of this is a belief system. Quotation marks on the belief aspect. The fact is that science is done with repeatable evidence and repeatable experiments that prove the same thing over and over again. So even a point that a layman can prove the experiments if advised with some instructions. Belief is not the same as science. Science says our world is round and a globe. And that we go around the sun. And that the sun's travelling through space. Yeah. It's not a belief system. It's put down into facts of figures and experiments that can be proved time and time again. Let me uh, just, just carry on, otherwise I'll be here all day. Yeah, I've been suffering with a bit of depression and everything else. But I think that's because I'm a spiritual person and attacked by demons, as many people are. I'm not going to be bitchy, I'm not going to call you names, I'm not going to say anything to this whatsoever. If you are under the point of depression and you think that you're being attacked by demons, I'm not saying this to be horrible, you need to go and see someone. You either need to see a psychiatrist to be able to find out what's going on and what the things are that you believe. And at that point as well, you can also be protected if the demons are real. If. More importantly, you also need to go see your GP, your doctor, your general practitioner to be able to go and get some antidepressants and be tested for what's going on. You need to look after yourself. Regardless of what your belief system is, your health is the most important. And with that being said, let's carry on with the video. You're waking up to the truth, they'll come down on you. And um. Yeah, just a couple of other things. Life. What's the meaning of it? Why are we here? I may have an answer. Before you do, life is not meaningless. Life is your own meaning. Life is for you. That's why it's your life, your decisions. You did it your way. Thank you, Sinatra. Thank you very much. But you know... That's the way it is. It's your choices. It's your decisions in life. Nobody else's. You do not need a God to give you a purpose in life. You give yourself purpose. Not necessarily, well, yeah, to how we live it, okay? But ultimately, the end game, okay? The only thing we're guaranteed in life is death, as I've said before. So we're going to go back to where we come from, okay? The Earth isn't a globe. He doesn't allude to what he believes is the beginning. Uh, I, I'm presuming, assuming, that it's a case of he's trying to allude to that he believes that we go back to God's side, that we go back to heaven or hell, uh, depending if you believe in the soul, what uh, denomination of Christianity you come from as well, or what religion that you come from. Um, to me, though, going back to where you come from means going up your mum's vagina. It's where you were born, it's where you come from. I don't want to go back up there. Ever. <laughs> Thank you very much. Not ever. No, not ever. So, yeah. Let, let's go and find out if it's a, another point of um, a religious statement that he's going to make. Or is it a science <laughs> statement? I, I couldn't finish the sentence because I know what the answer is. But we'll, we'll, we'll have a look. This place has been created. There's a lot more to it than what we know. We've only just started finding out it's bloody flat. 
Yeah, people actually thought the planet was flat before they thought it was round. They also thought that the planet itself, when they did discover it was a planet, also revolved around... Everything revolved around the Earth, sorry. Rather than us evolving around the Sun. So, when you say that we've only just found out, no, it's been around for centuries. In fact, it was the previous idea of what our planet was beforehand because of our perception our understanding that's the thing with science science changes but the experiments and theories that are solid theories which for people that don't know what science entails when it's a theory it's a law of practice but anyway i'm getting off, off track the, the point that i'm making is that the flat earth was a theory long before the globe earth it's not only just re it's not only just happening, it's reoccurring for some reason, but it hasn't just happened. So when everyone's all like, "Oh, give them up. Where's your proof? Where's your map?" Okay. <laughs> they don't say where's your map so they can get as a got you. They say where's your map as your working model. You're the ones that are questioning what the globe or the the idea of our model is, so to speak. But yet. You guys can never come up with a working model. And then when people call you out on the bullshit for the working model that doesn't work, you always go, well, it's not up to us to prove that the model's correct or not. It's just up to us to put the idea into people's heads that it's not correct. For people that are supposed to understand science, you don't understand science. That's not the way that a theory is supposed to work. That's not the way that a theory is supposed to possess and move forward. The way that it's supposed to move forward is by the facts of proving what you have in a working model, in a working simulant. But, you know, whatever. Nobody knows what science is anymore, apparently. If you've only just found out we've been living a lie our whole lives, yeah? We haven't got the manpower, the resources, the money to go map the Earth, okay? I think NASA's been doing that since the 60s or 50s. Maybe NASA's only been doing it since the 50s or 60s, but humanity in every single culture has been doing it since the dawn of time. You can go back in records and find maps that are thousands of years old. But you know, doesn't matter. It's only what I think and what my perceptions are at the end of the day, isn't it? It's not what's actually happening or anything. But my main question is this. Now, I've already been told by someone, equations is the answer to this question, okay? If you know a maths equation that will prove the globe to what I'm about to say, please leave a comment. August 2017, the total eclipse, okay? Fucking wasp. The moon shadow travelled across the United States continent from the west coast to the east coast. Probably took about three to four hours, I think, okay? But the globe, apparently, rotates west to east at ridiculous speeds, okay? The Earth will do about 30 full revolutions to the Moon's one revolution. And if you go back towards August 2017, when it was taking place, I believe NASA had a computer graphic on the news, on the controlled news medias. And I'll try to find it and put up the video. Spoiler, he uh, never does. He never finds the actual video. But I will quickly explain what it is very quickly, and then I will actually go to NASA to actually prove the point and give you the actual correct figures. Now, the Earth rotates around about 1,600 and something kilometres per hour, right? He's correct on when he says that the Moon uh, rotates at less. But rotates does not mean does a orbit. The moon's orbit orbits at around about 3,000 and a hundred and something kilometers per hour. Almost double. In actual fact, well over double, sorry. And it comes to the point of actually going, well, okay, well, if it's traveling quicker that way and it's traveling slower that way, what actually happens? The fact is that the moon is traveling quicker than what the Earth is spinning. So the moon looks like it's going backwards. That's why it looks like it's going in front. Simple, isn't it? Simple. 
Now, let me actually show you this so you guys actually know what I'm talking about and you can actually have the maths equation so you can work out the distance and the speeds. Shall we? So, this is obviously from NASA. This is their official response to the eclipse, but is quite factually correct. I know that a lot of flat earthers will go, yeah, but you're using NASA. You're using NASA. It's like, yeah, they're one of the only places that actually has stuff to do with you know, celestial bodies and explaining it. But, you know, so why do eclipse tracks move eastward even though the Earth rotates from west to east? And this is because the moon to the east in its orbit at about 3,400 kilometers per hour and the Earth rotates to the east at 1,670 kilometers per hour at the equator. So the lunar shadow moves to the east at, and this is the math equation that you are so looking for, 3,400 kilometers per hour minus 1,670 kilometers per hour, which equals, surprisingly, the moon travelling faster than the Earth in its rotation, more than 1,730 kilometres per hour, near the equator. You cannot keep up with the shadow of the eclipse unless you travelled at Mark 1.5. So, my friend, this is a case of going back to what you were saying before, doesn't it? The case is... That's the reason why. That's the math equation. The moon travels quicker than what the Earth does. <gasps> but in order for the moon shadow to go across the United States continent from west to east, the Earth would have to be rotating east to west. And on this computer graphic on the controlled news media channels, the globe did exactly that, travelled east to west. It's funny that, again, you don't provide any links for this, you don't provide any sort of points to this, and the thing is that it doesn't have to change its rotation for the moon to do this. It is quite easily explained by velocity and speed. Very easily. But, you know, please, please carry on. Please. Okay. The heliocentric model is bullshit. And I want to know how an airplane travelling at a couple hundred miles an hour north on the equator of the globe, okay? Because how fast are we traveling, or how fast are we rotating on the equator? About a thousand miles an hour. Well, that's already wrong. The plane is not rotating at all. The outside of the Earth is rotating at a thousand miles per hour. If the rest of the world was to feel the actual rotational force, then everything would get ripped up, there would be massive waves, no water, all that type of good crap that all you guys always point to. Problem is, we can see from the idea of energy from central fusion, as in what spins will stay nearer to the centre, and even more easier for people to understand, even if you don't like those ideas of gravity and central fusion, you also have the point of, if you drive in a car, and you drive at 70 miles per hour in a straight line, and you don't decrease or accelerate your speed, then it's a case of you can stand up, you can walk around, you can drink water, nothing is affecting you until you start to decelerate until you accelerate again. It's the same thing for flying. And if people are going to go, yeah, but how does the atmosphere affect the cars and everything else like that, and how does it... It's the same thing as it affects the cars. It doesn't affect the cars in the way that you think it is. Because it doesn't move what's around. Because gravity itself, as the planet is moving, will pull you along slowly with it. The purpose of that is that we cannot feel the difference in it. The same as when you are actually at a constant speed. Not when you're accelerating or decelerating in a train carriage. You cannot feel that the train is moving and you can walk up and down its carriages until it starts to accelerate or decelerate again. These are not hard concepts to understand, my friend. They really are not. But let's, let's 
let's carry on and let's see what happens further on, shall we? So tell me what maths and equations, okay, proves that happens. Do you think a plane can fly sideways at a thousand miles an hour and forwards? And yet birds and the bees have no, you know, they, they fly effortlessly. I don't see the atmosphere pushing them around. People will say the atmosphere pushes the plane around. It's stupid, okay? The atmosphere does to an extent push people around, but because the atmosphere is pushing the people around with the added force of gravity on the ground, you're not actually losing any sort of space as you're going around. So if I was to stand still, Technically, I would still be traveling with the Earth at over a thousand miles per hour, technically, but I wouldn't be feeling it. Because of central fusion, it wouldn't be a point that I would be feeling the effects of traveling that fast. Nobody's ever suggested that you would. And the fact is that you're trying to suggest that people are suggesting that you're adding the thousand miles per hour on top of the 200 miles per hour, or vice versa. Kind of a ridiculous statement, my friend. It really, really is. Anyway, let's get to the end of this video, shall we? Just please research flat earth for yourself. Okay. I don't think we're going to change the system, however. But I think all we can do is get on the right side of God. Okay. Before we die. Okay. And there it is. That's the end of the video for everybody. The idea is not to believe in the idea of a flat earth or a round earth because that doesn't really matter. What really matters is the idea of the belief in God, at least in this person's instance. Maybe there are other people that don't believe in God and are using it for that aspect. But in this person's case, this is all of aspects of religiosity and the idea of we are here, we are put here for a creator, we have been created, the earth's been created, so therefore it states in his book that where he's read this from that everything must be flat. Yeah, good luck with that. So with that all being said, I think it's best for me to say au revoir, farewell, adieu, I vita zen, I'll see you all again. But first of all, don't forget to like this video, don't forget to subscribe to this video, and don't forget to check out my new videos. See you all again real soon. Bye-bye for now.